Announcements go this Friday the 26th is all night prayer. Um, Saturday the 27th, uh, we are having men's fellowship at 6 p.m. Uh, no Royal Rangers um, this coming Saturday. And then Saturday, August the 3rd, is first prayer at 7 p.m. So I'm just going to keep it short there. Um, but that's what we've got coming up over the next couple of weeks. School's going to be starting back. But if y'all have any questions about upcoming events, um, feel free to ask. Lord bless y'all. All right. Praise God. That was short. <laughs> well, God's good. Amen. I am so glad to be living for you. Aren't you? Amen. I'm telling you, he can come at any time. And we've had the opportunity to to be able to know him, to have him in our lives. I want to stay in that safe place with him, don't you? Amen. Stay close to him. Praise God. Well, uh, I started two weeks ago. Now, because most of our church was at peak we didn't have last Wednesday night service. And so I'm going to take you back all the way to the previous Wednesday night, which is two weeks ago. And because I told you, I mentioned to you, it would probably take me uh, two or three times to cover what we're going to cover. And yes, yeah, so I'll direct your attention again and refresh your memory in the book of James. And, uh, does anybody remember what I titled, what I preached, taught rather, two weeks ago? Does anybody remember? Jeremiah? When he's having trouble with the devil. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, Jeremiah, he paid attention to it. Are you having trouble with the devil? And uh, praise God. That's what we're talking about. And James chapter verse number one uh, I I kind of go down a lot of rabbit holes as it were and so a lot of this uh, I kind of jump into it in advance and so I uh, I kind of got you may hear what I said the other night weeks ago tonight a little bit too because I kind of jumped into what I was going to cover as I was teaching last night uh, prior I meant to do it in three three parts what I'm covering here uh, I wanted to talk to you uh, like the first time uh, two weeks ago I used the first three verses it says, from whence come wars and fightings among you. Now, again, and I pointed this out two weeks ago, that this is not written to sinners. It's written to Christians, okay? The Christian churches, okay? So if you study the epistles from the book of Acts, where the Romans starts there right after the book of Acts, all the way to Jude, which is that little book of that one chapter book before the book of Revelation, those are letters that are written to the Christians. And uh, so, and as you read those, you will see that Christians, uh, you, there were Christians that were fumbling the ball, as it were, you know, 
I talked about the Corinthian church. Uh, Paul told them that they were carnal and acting like men. And whenever they had one preacher, they were some of them were saying, "I'm of Paul," and others were saying, "I'm of Apollos." And, and uh, Paul tried to straighten them out and, and make them understand that this is not preacher religion. This is about Jesus, amen? Right. And you're, you're a convert to Jesus Christ, not to Paul or Apollos. You're not my convert, and, you know? I don't have a church. I'm just part of a church, amen? amen. Praise God. Jesus is the only one I know has a church, uh, a real church. <clears throat> and uh, it's all about Jesus, amen? But when people, people sometimes mistakenly get wrong uh, perspectives and stuff, and before you know it, they'll be following something that's really not biblical. And so Paul and the rest of the apostles had to straighten the Christians out. James is an apostle, and just like Paul was correcting the Corinthians, he's having to correct these believers. These are not people that's... Uh, that's outside of the faith. These are people that are believers in the truth of Jesus. And, I, and I'll take you, I'll back up a few scriptures here. If you look in the previous chapter, uh, in chapter 2, verse 1, he writes, My brethren, have not, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons. So he's talking to people that are believers. You see that? And... James was one that focused on the Jewish believers, him and Peter, and Paul was focused on the Gentiles, that's us. Uh, he was the apostle to the Gentiles, he called him that. Hi, Bro Santos, good to see you, good to see you. And then James 1, that is that James is writing to, James is servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes of which are scattered abroad. But he's writing to Christians, but he's writing to Jewish Christians. Okay? In fact, the early church in its beginning, it was made up of Jews that were converted to Jesus. They were believers. It was also the Jews that crucified Jesus. So we're not talking about them. We're talking about he's writing to people that believe the faith of Jesus, you know, and converted to it. And so you can look at at that scripture, you can also uh, look over in the fifth chapter of James, and uh, that's, that's the last chapter uh, in this letter that is written, and uh, praise God, he finishes off in verse number 19 of the fifth chapter of James, he says, brethren, he calls them brethren, he wouldn't be calling anybody else that, I don't think. You know, he would be calling the fellow Christians. He said, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, so these people are in the truth. Amen. Right? Amen. I'm just trying to help you to understand this is not written to people outside the truth. This is written to people that are believers. Okay? Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert them, if we get them back, you know, if they, whatever caused them to get out, they got out, and we are able to get them back established in Jesus, right? Amen. You know, let him know that he which converted the sinner, when they leave the truth, they become a sinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I say. That's the Bible. <laughs> and this is not a once saved, always saved thing, folks, right. like some falsely teach. Amen. He that endured to the end shall be saved, Jesus said. Right? we got to continue in the faith, right? Amen. So if we are able, if somebody does fall away, if we're able to get them back in the truth, let him which con uh, converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sin. Amen. Amen. They can be forgiven, but they've got to come back into the truth of the word of God. Amen. So what I'm trying to tell you is James is writing to Christians that got hang-ups. <laughs> okay? They got hang-ups here. 
And the Galatian church had some hang-ups. And Paul had to get them straightened out. He said, I labor uh, once again until Christ be birthed in you. Right? Remember that? Mm -hmm. He told them that. Because somebody come along with some false doctrine and tried to blend it in with the truth of the gospel. And you can't uh, blend false doctrine in with the truth because what you got is a distortion of the truth. Amen. Okay? We need the true message of Jesus. Amen? Amen. And we need to live in the truth of what Jesus uh, taught and what he gave us and what is all about him. And uh, we, I know we don't know everything. I've got things yet to learn, I'm sure. You know, I consider I do. I hope you do too. I hope that you can be taught. That's why we got teachers and, uh, and pastors and preachers and evangelists and all those ministries are for helping us to grow in Jesus, right? Amen. But we don't want to believe false things, right? Amen. And sometimes the church has been guilty at times of falling into things that are not of Jesus, that are not of the Lord, whether it's just simply being carnal, like we talked about the Corinthians, or whether they, some of them uh, were guilty of fornication, some of them were uh, you know, just guilty of doing a variety of things. There's lots of different areas that you could talk about whenever you're talking about falling away. And, uh, but anyway, so he's writing to believers here. And he tells them in James 4, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members? You're having trouble amongst you. Because lust. Now, when you say the word lust, a lot of times you think about, well, they're having unclean thoughts about another person, you know, immoral thoughts. It can be that. But what it is, lust is simply uh, passions inside. We get passionate, you know. We got, we got uh, all types of passions in this stuff called flesh, right? We're all made out of it. Amen. And we all feel these things, the right situation, the right circumstances arise, and that stuff will try to rise up and show itself, won't it? Mm -hmm. Does it with you? It does with me. I told you I get pretty upset with my chickens sometimes. You know? <laughs> I got a mess of chickens. And, and uh, because they just are plumb ignorant sometimes. They do some ignorant things, get out, and, you know. And you know what? I feel angry at them, and that's not spiritual. For me to feel that way, and uh, it's just a, a, a an animal that's doing something that's just not. I mean, it's what they do, you know. And so I still need to con control me with that passion. And all of us have it. All of us have the same. We're made of the same stuff. All of everybody. And so he's telling them. He's trying to help them to understand where problems are coming from uh, amongst them. These are Christians. These are people that love Jesus. Amen? Praise God. But they, they're, uh, they're kind of making some boo-boos. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. So he says, he tells them, you lust and have not, you kill and obtain, uh, and cannot obtain, you fight and war, and yet you have not because you ask not. And this is the one I focused on two weeks ago. You ask and receive not because you ask a miss that it may, uh, that, you, that you may consume it upon your lust. In other words, uh, you're wanting things from God and you're not getting answers to it uh, because, and I covered this, remember that? About your motives, what's driving you. Remember that? We talked about that? What's driving you? Jesus said, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrite, uh, you know, to be standing on the street corner. They're getting their reward. Remember that? They're, they're, they're praying wrong, and the God's got his ears stopped because it's not the prayer's wrong, it's the way they're doing it, right? And he also talked about fasting. He said, wash your face. And, uh, you know, don't appear to men to fast. 
And if you'll do it in, with the right spirit, you'll receive from God. Amen. You know, but we covered in Isaiah 58, was pleasing God, but because their motives were wrong, what, what was driving them, they were wanting to smite with the fist. I'm going to fast and pray, and God's going to get you. <laughs> you know? And, and God said, is that the kind of fast I accept? I know you're fasting, but you're doing it for the wrong reason, you know? And so he said, this is what you need to do. Loose the bonds, and he went to, you know, he said, this is the kind of fast that I accept, and if you'll fast the right way for the right reason, I'll be there and I'll hear you, and I'll answer your prayers. So you're, both ways, you're fasting, and both ways, you're praying, and he talked about giving. Remember he talked about giving? He said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand do, is doing. Because if you do it to be seen of men, you just got what your reward is. Okay. You know, the, oh, let somebody pat you on the back, but you won't get nothing from God. Right? Amen. He said, but if you'll fast, uh, I mean, if you'll give, uh, not letting your left hand know what your right hand doing, then your Father, which is in heaven, will see, and he will reward you openly. So it has all to do with motives, and that's what James is trying to let the Christians here know. You're, you're doing some things for the wrong reason, and that's why you're not getting anywhere. Right? You've got to have right motives. Then he says this, and this is what the part I told you, this is the second phase of what we're talking about here in these scriptures. He said, you adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore shall be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Uh, do you think that the scripture saith in vain? The spirit that dwelleth in us lusts is to envy, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Those three verses are the next ones that I wanted to talk about. And I, and, uh, Going over, I realized I covered a whole lot of it that first week, you know. But the one, the reason why they were having this difficulty with wars, you got to notice those are questions, aren't they? Whence come wars and fightings among you? And then he, he asked another question: uh, Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? And so he's telling them. He's, he's asking them, think about it. Where's the problem coming from? It's coming from passion. It, lust and passion is the same thing. And again, the flesh has passions. And the Bible says if we live after the flesh, we will die. But if we will, through the Spirit, the, the Holy Ghost, uh, put to death the deeds of the flesh, we shall live. We'll have a life. Amen. Amen. If we can learn to live after the Spirit of God, and what is God? God is love, isn't he? Right. He's love. Amen. Praise God. But the flesh is not love. It doesn't produce love. It, it's That's not a, of the flesh. Amen. Praise God. If you look at uh, Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm just going off my head here. So. It says in verse number 1, and you had the quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. We're in in times past, in other words, before we came to the Lord, we walked according to the course of this world. We were living like everybody else. But when we come to Jesus, we take a different path on it. You are taking a different path on <laughs> And I hope you thought, I'm trying to, right? Amen. Amen. The flesh is not eradicated, folks. But we stop living certain ways and we start applying ourselves to the Spirit of God, right? So we're in, in times past, you walked according to the course of this world. According, when you're walking according to the course of this world, which is walking after the flesh, you're, you're, you're walking according to the prince and the power of the air. That's talking about the devil. The flesh nature is in sync with the devil. It's not the devil, but it's in sync with the devil. It's in agreement with the devil. It's in harmony with the devil. 
In fact, that's the route he takes to work in our lives to harm us, to harm our families, to harm all parts of our lives. Amen? If you, and I said this two weeks ago, but if you can get the flesh under subjection to God, amen, you can defeat the devil. Amen. You can defeat the world. Amen? And you can live victorious. Amen? But my biggest problem, y'all hear me say this. I know you hear me say this all the time. I don't mean to be repetitious. But the biggest battle I face is me. Okay. It is my flesh. That guy I look at in the mirror. You know? Because if, if I can get him to surrender to God, amen, most of my battle is already won. The devil can do very little to me. If my flesh is brought under subjection, I get tempted. I get tempted being a preacher. I'm, I get tempted. Being a preacher is just a Christian with a job to do. You understand? We got the same feelings that you feel. Amen. Amen. We just got a responsibility. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But but uh, we should, if we're preaching this stuff, we should be setting a good example. Of doing that. But anyway, he says this when we walk according to the course of this world and we, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, the people that don't obey God, among whom also we all, he's talking to Christians here, we all had our conversation or our behavior. That's what that word conversation is talking about. Our behavior in times past when we in time past, in the lust, there's that word lust again, in other words, in the passions of the flesh, fulfilling, we fulfill the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. Amen. Right. You can light my fuse, <laughs> right? Right. right? Come on, we all feel those passions, every one of us do. <clears throat> Praise God. We were the children of wrath, even as others. We used to be all of that kind of stuff. And you know what? There's occasions where I have to get a hold of my son and say, God, please forgive me. Because that's I don't go out and get drunk anymore. I don't go to the night uh, the nightlife and go to the dance hall anymore. You know, I'm not doing drugs or alcohol, but I'm telling you, sometimes I gotta watch myself. And, you know, people give me problems. Amen. I've got to watch me. <clears throat> Amen. So that's what he's talking about. Because uh, I told, I went to a neurologist the other day, and uh, <laughs> uh, it was a muzzle lady. She was very, very nice. Very nice lady. And uh, I got the witness to her about Jesus. You know? I told her, I told her, I said, uh, you know, uh, my, I got a daughter that went overseas, and uh, she met some Muslim friends. And they conversed back and forth about what they believed. But <clears throat> I told her, I said, uh, I told her about you, you know, and. Uh, she said, I told her this lady was from another country. She spoke good English, and she was a very smart lady, very kind, very nice. Uh, I appreciated her very much. But uh, I was talking to her and telling her about the Lord, and I said, well, you know what? I believe that the only God there is is the God of Abraham. There's only one God, and there's not another God. I believe that. But you know what? She believes that, too. But I said, but you call his name Allah. But I call his name Yahweh. He's Yahweh God. And you know what? He came in the flesh, and he died for our sins. Amen. And I had a good conversation with her. And uh, they gave me meds to take because a year ago, over a year ago nearly, not quite a year ago. It'd be November, I guess, that it'd be a year. I went out deer hunting, and I got real super cold, <clears throat> and uh, uh, <laughs> I got real super cold. I got up 
out about 3 30 in the morning when I set out in the deer stand and uh, by the time I got home I was chilled to the bone y'all ever been cold like that just couldn't get warm I was chilled to the bone and uh, I come home my wife had bought some of these little soups uh, that they got in the deli over at Walmart or something anyway I heated me one of those up it was pretty much liquid and I and I kind of took that down to get my inside warm. I was cold. And uh, and I decided I'm gonna go get underneath the covers, you know, to try to get myself warmed up because I was just quivering inside. And I went in there and, and uh, got underneath the covers and went to sleep. When I woke up, I guess I woke up. <laughs> they told me I woke up. They told me I didn't know anything. And they said that, Next thing you know, my, my family's got me in Scott and White saying that I had a seizure. And not that I rolled back, my eyes rolled back in my head, enough, but it was a memory thing. I couldn't remember. And uh, I had, I struggled with sleep apnea and stuff like that. Along with that is what they said probably caused it. Uh, and uh, with all that cold and stuff. Well, they put me on some meds to uh, prevent that from happening again. So I did take them, I had been taking them. And uh, she was asking me about, do you have any more problems? I said, yeah, no more problems. You know, not that I remember. <laughs> <laughs> not that I can remember, I didn't have no more problems. And uh, I just, I told her, I said, you know, the, the only thing is, my wife says I'm a little bit irritable. <laughs> and she, that doctor said, those things will cause you to feel like it a little bit. But you know what? <clears throat> uh, I, don't, I don't feel like that no more, but I think it was the beginning of taking that stuff. And uh, I haven't heard her complain anymore. <laughs> so hopefully I'm, I'm gotten past that. But uh, that's not the spirit of the Lord to be irritable and to, to be grouchy and stuff like that. And she's not here tonight. Y'all say a word of prayer for her. She was feeling that. And she didn't want to spread, you know, the stuff that's going around. But anyway, uh, that is flesh. Amen. You know, that is flesh. And we all have it. We all have it. And, you know, uh, being a Christian... We have got to recognize that. And I think a lot of people fall prey to, uh, on, a, on a moment's notice, simply because they don't stay conscious that it, that exists in their life, the ability to do that. And we need to stay close to the Lord and full of the Holy Ghost. And you'll pray through good and spend some time with the Lord in prayer. You'll be so surprised at how much uh, things change inside of you, amen? amen? And how it helps you uh, to be more Christ-like, amen? amen? Does anybody agree with that? Amen. amen. Praise God. He's the one, I'm telling you, I need Jesus, amen? amen. I need his spirit ruling and reigning in my heart. Amen. Praise God, because before I came to him, you know, I wasn't, I don't feel that I was a very good person. I hope I'm better now. And I think I am, you know. But uh, it's only simply because he's there in my life. Amen. Amen. And he is where, <clears throat> where my change comes from. Amen. He, it, because of having him there in my life, amen, he's, you know, before I came to the Lord, I wound up in jail a few times. I hadn't been in jail since I found Jesus. Or Jesus found me, you know, and uh, <clears throat> I just uh, I had problems uh, that were, you know, associated with drinking, and I became a different creature when I would drink. But you know what? I've been free from all that stuff for oh my, ever since I was like 28 years old, and uh, I'm four, uh, 68 right now, fixing to be 69. Amen. So I'm grateful to the Lord for. For delivering me from that. And most of all, you've heard, I know you've heard me say this before. He delivered me from me. <laughs> but
Because I truly am my biggest problem. And the only way the devil can get to me, if I am under subjection to God, the only way the devil could do something to me is through other people that are carnal. You hear me? Amen. Other people, the devil will use instruments that are not spiritual. And through that, uh, only then even if the Lord allows it to happen. You know? But, you know, there's early Christians, and even today, there's Christians that are that are persecuted for the faith of Jesus. Can I tell you, not one of those people that are persecuted of Christians are spiritual people. Amen. Not one of them are Holy Ghost filled. Because if they were Holy Ghost filled, they wouldn't be doing that. Amen? Amen. I never had a real Christian persecute me. Amen? Not a real Christian. Amen? Praise God. Because we get filled with a different spirit than what the world has. Now, again, we all have the potential. Every one of us has the potential to let that part of us arise if we're not careful. Amen. It's kind of like, you know, when we come to the Lord, we hear the gospel, and he, he gets a hold of our hearts. We come to uh, an altar, whether it's this bench, maybe it's by your bedside, or, you know, wherever it is. Maybe it's out under a tree out in the forest somewhere, you know. But you come to that place, and you say, Lord, you, you're, you're, you're needing God in your life. And most of us were shipwrecked when we come to the Lord. I was. And I needed, uh, you know, I remember saying, and you, you've heard me say this before, but I was in my room, and I, I looked up. I didn't even know if there was such a thing as a God. And I said, if there's a God, can you help me? <laughs> because I was really... Is what I was yielding my life to that got me into trouble, Brother Jordan. You know? You know, a lot of the things that could have been avoided in my life if I had not caused them. I'm just being honest with you, you know? A lot of times we are, you know, not everything we cause, but there are things that we cause that we could avoid if we would just live for God. Right? Y'all are quite much tonight, amen? Praise God. That's all right, bro. <clears throat> Amen. But he delivered me from me. The best thing he ever did is get me out of me. You know, living after my flesh. And so many people, I see so many broken people, so many hurting people, so many broken homes, broken families, marriages dissolved, destroyed, and stuff. And you know where really and truly it all comes from? It comes because people, uh, a lot of times, that most of the time, I would say, most of the time, people do not have the Lord reigning and ruling in their home. Amen. Flesh is alive, and, and the devil comes in sweeping into their home lives. Amen. His avenue to get to you, the place where he destroys is our flesh nature. That's how he gets in. When you cut the life of the flesh off, living after the flesh, you put a roadblock up where he can't come in. That's what you do. He might stay outside and throw stones towards you, you know? Amen? But just put the shield of faith up, and you'll be all right. Amen? But it's flesh that he works through. Let no man say when he's tempted, he's tempted to God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man, but every man's tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust, which is passions. Right? <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. And enticed. The enticing comes from the devil. But the, the weakness comes from our passions, our flesh nature. Amen. And yet, I'm, I wish I could tell you that this was going to end, but it's not going to end until the rapture. Amen. That's when this mortal being that I am, this is when I will never be tempted again. You know? You know what the Lord knows? He knows that if you will deny this right now, whenever you're in weakness, when you have this 
that when you put him before this stuff and you die out to this, I was going to say this just want to go, but if you go to a, a, a funeral and, and you got a, a somebody that has passed away in that uh, coffin, right? You got them there. You can cuss them out. Don't do that. <laughs> you can cuss them out. And they'll never cuss back at you. You know, you can spit in their face. And they won't even, they won't even respond. You can put porn in front of them. You know, shine porn onto them. And, and they would never get aroused. And the reason why is because they're dead. And that's the way, the way we need to be to our flesh. That's why the Bible says, Paul said, I die daily. In other words, I got to do this death thing every day. I got to bring myself uh, to where I am not alive in the flesh. And, and the way you do that is by praying through the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. Praise God. Because the flesh has a nature to it. Okay? And, man, y'all might need to listen to another preacher. Y'all hear my stories all the time. <laughs> But truly, a pig wallows in the mud because it's their nature. And sinners sin because it's their nature. And we've all encountered that weakness in our lives. It's called the flesh, right? But if you could change the pig's nature, he would quit doing that. And the Holy Ghost is the divine nature. And God puts that in our lives so that we don't have to go back to the sin. Amen. And so that we don't have to go back to wallowing in the mud. Because it changes the way we are. So the safe place to be is stay full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Come on, stay in that divine nature. Amen. Come on, walk in the Spirit. Live in the Spirit. Be led of the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit, right? Amen. Preach in the Spirit. Amen. Sing in the Spirit. Amen. Come on, do everything. Operate. You are built up, Amen. according to the Scriptures, you are built up a spiritual house. And if you look that up in Strong's, it means a non carnal That's what we are. When we're living for the Lord and we're where we need to be with the Lord, and our goal, the direction we're trying to head, is to be a non carnal carnal person. This means, that means the flesh is not alive in our lives. Amen. We have come to the place where Jesus is actually our Lord. That means he's your boss. That means he controls you and the flesh doesn't. That's why Jesus said, if you're going to be my disciple, you're going to have to die. Now he's not talking about taking a bullet and shooting yourself or taking a a sword and piercing yourself. Jesus said, I gotta die if I'm gonna live for him. Amen. He said, if a, except a grain of corn fall into the ground and die, it revives alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. And we'll never bring forth fruit unto God until there's a death to the flesh. And then we can bring forth the fruit of the Spirit, which is love and joy, peace. Gentleness, meekness, temperance, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. That comes from God. But the works of the flesh are adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, wickedness, even witchcrafts in there. Amen. Hatred, bearing, strife. All those things is that flesh side. Amen. And, I, and I've said it a number of times that we need to study and we need to learn what our enemy is. It's not people. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against people. But our enemy, the thing that we are trying to conquer, you need to know what your enemy is like. And don't live with your enemy. Right? So study your flesh nature. Study. Jesus said, it's not that which goes into the man that defiles the man. But that which comes out of the man is what defiles him. In other words, you know, you may not, not eat too many pork chops. They may not be the most healthiest for you. But it doesn't make you a sinner. It's not that which goes in that defiles us. It's that which comes out. 
of the man. Jesus said that defiles the man. For out of the heart of man, amen, uh, comes forth evil speaking, blasphemy, hatred, adultery. That's why Jesus said, if you look on a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery in your heart. Because this is a spiritual thing. Right? It's a spiritual thing. Praise God. You know, we need to be cleaned on the inside. It's not just the act. It's the spirit of the thing. Amen? Praise God. Amen. That's why James also said, sweet water and bitter water doesn't came out of the same faucet. We've got a water fountain out there. And you're going to either get clean, fresh water or you're going to get salt water. You can't get both of them out of the same one. You, you might get some not quite so salty water, you know. <laughs> but if you want clean water, unsalted water, there's only one way to get it. That's put pure water in it. Praise God. And how much does God tolerate? How much does God want? You know, I've gotten a glass of water before, a good clean glass of water, and, and brought it in to the church and asked anybody if they would like to drink it. And they would probably, and I asked them, I said, how many of you would drink it? You know, if I hand you a fresh glass of water out of the, the cold, cool uh, water cooler out there, and you would probably drink it on the water. The cup was clean and everything, wouldn't you? Amen. But if I did this, it stuck it in there and then tried to hand me. <laughs> I wouldn't want to drink it. I, I wouldn't want to drink it. It's just licking my finger and sticking my finger in it. And say, now drink it. It ain't much in it. How much carnality does God want in our lives? He wants us to walk in love. Amen? Amen. Praise God. That's why uh, it was Paul that told him uh, that if, if you see a brother that had basically fallen, it says it's going to take a spiritual person to restore that person. And a spiritual person is not one that's going to point their finger at them and tell them, you, you're a sinner, you know. They might be a sinner. They might have done something sinful. But you, when you're spiritual, you consider yourself, you know what? Except by the grace of God, it could be me that's, that's in that fallen condition. You know what? Love, that's what love says. Amen. That's why James, or Paul said also, he says, knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifies. And that goes back to motives of why we do things. Okay, knowledge. He said, we all believe in one God. We know there's one God. You know, and there's none other but He. But He said, not everybody has that knowledge inside of them. So if you have the knowledge, you could go to them and you could talk to them crudely. And your your knowledge could puff you up where you demeanor them and you blast them and you you know you're not you're not going to them with love in your heart. He said, the charity will edify. It is not wrong to have knowledge. We need to have knowledge, but we need to carry it to them in the vehicle of love. Amen. It'll show us how to deliver the truth to people. Amen. I can take this Bible and I can slap you upside the head with it. Amen. Or I can preach it to you with a burden in my heart for your soul and want you to be saved. And one way you want it, and the other way you won't want them to do with it. Amen. It's nothing wrong with the word, it's the way I deliver it to you. I mean, it's the spirit that you do it in. Praise God. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. <clears throat> Am I making any sense to you? Amen. Amen. I hope so. Praise God. Amen. Let me get back over here. I covered a lot of this the first week. <clears throat> praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Paul said this in Romans 7 and 18. He said, he said this. This is talking about humanity. Left to ourselves without God. It says, for, he says, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh. Now, Paul can say this. I can definitely say it. Amen. Amen. Is that right? If Paul could say this, I definitely can say it. I'm sure enough, nothing to compare myself to Paul. I know that in me, that it, in parentheses, he's, he identified the way he's talking about, that is in my flesh. 
He's not talking about the Spirit of God in it. But he's saying, I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present. I want to do what's right. But how to perform that which is good, I find not left in myself. But we know how to make a difference. That's by praying through the Holy Ghost. Because we get that higher nature inside of us. Amen. Come on. Everybody's prayed through. You know, instantaneously, you felt the love of God inside of you. Come on. You felt kind. None, nobody that prays through wants to go up and belt somebody in the job. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the nature that we receive when we receive the Spirit of God. In fact, we find people that, have y'all found that out? They may not know a whole lot, but man, they are wanting to be somebody. They're wanting to help anybody they can help, aren't they? Amen. Uh, Amen. Amen. Maybe. I wondered before in Ephesians, I mean in Revelation, the third chapter where Jesus addressed the church at Ephesus, he, he said, I, I have a few things against you because you've left your first love. And it sent, he, he complimented them about a whole lot of things. You know, they had a lot of good points. But I wondered before, did they lose that tenderness, that first love that comes from getting full of the Holy Ghost, that compassion that you feel, you know, the desire to be to be good to other people and to help other people and to, you know what I'm talking about. Come on, you feel that. When you get full of the love of God, and that's what you get instantaneously when you get the Holy Ghost. You get the love of God. You may not have a whole lot of theological knowledge about everything, but when you get the Holy Ghost instantaneously, you know, you are filled with the love of God. Amen? Amen. And it's kind and it's gentle. And it's merciful and it's compassionate. That's the Spirit of God. He that loveth not, John said, knoweth not God, for God is love. He is that clean, holy love. Amen? He, he said, I mean, look at the Spirit of Jesus. He said that, you know, he'll leave the 99 and he'll go and look for that one sheep that's gone astray. Amen? And when he finds it, He'll rejoice more over it than the nine and nine that it was always there. Amen? Because that's compassion. That's love. Amen? That's mercy. Amen? He's the one that Jesus is like the good Samaritan. You know, that whenever religion walked by and saw the man that was wounded, you know, they went around the other side. The scribe and the Pharisee. But the good Samaritan, which was despised by the Jews, Amen. When he came and saw the man wounded in the ditch, he had compassion on him. Amen. That's how just the spirit of Jesus. Amen. He had compassion on him. And he went and it cost him out of his own pocket to take care of that man. He put him on his own knees. He put forth his own effort. You got to understand, that's the spirit of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Right? Amen. Amen. Am I making any sense? Yes, sir. Yeah. The word. And these guys that James dealing with here. These are Christians, and he's saying, where are the wars and fighting coming from? It's coming from your flesh nature. That's what he's saying. <clears throat> That's what he's telling them. It comes from the lust in your members. Amen. Praise God. He's trying to help them to be victorious Christians. Amen. He's not trying to push them down. I'm not trying to push anybody down either. But I want you to see what we're really trying to accomplish, amen, being Christian. I'm telling you something. When people have trouble in their home life, if they'll put this into practice, you know what? They'll see improvement in their home life, amen? When the love of God can rule and reign, amen, when people, most people, when they get married, come on, when they get married, they live to please the other person. They will do anything to get Amen. them to be their boyfriend or girlfriend, whatever Amen. the case is. Amen. They will do, they'll spend whatever they have to spend. Amen. <laughs> is that right? Amen. They'll spend whatever they need to spend to, to they want that person to like them. Right? Love but when they get married, too often it changes. And it's what you're not doing for me anymore. <laughs> right? 
Now, I, come on. That's what causes a lot of problems. People lose that thing that got them together. If they will keep it, it will keep them together. Right? Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm wading off in deep water. <laughs> We're going to keep it. Yeah. Well, you know what? That, that same rule works for any relationship that you have. It really does. You know? If you, had, if you go to a job and you are just grateful, I got a job. You know? I've seen it over and over and over throughout the years. And I don't believe it's wrong to, to get a better job for yourself. I'm not talking about that. But I have seen people that got jobs, and they were so grateful. They were going to be the best employee. And the next thing you know, they get around other employees that's grumbling and griping and complaining. Next thing you know, they're grumbling, griping, and complaining, and they're fired. Because they let that first important thing, amen, that they, they cherish that job, they let that be stolen from them. And so it, it affects... Every area, whatever dealings you have with people, it will change. Amen. Praise God. It will. It will help you. It will benefit you. It will bless you. I believe God's people are grateful people. Huh? I believe God's people are grateful people. I believe God's people... Amen. The real ones are people that love to come and give thanks to him. Amen. Love. You know, they're not coming to be seen. You know, they can care less who sees them. I've come here to give God thanks and praise and magnify. When you lose that and you become religious instead of worshipers, come on, the pool's going to dry up. The pool's going to dry up. Right? Are y'all just thinking real deep? <laughs> or am I making you mad? They love me, they love me not. They love me, they love me not. They love you. I love you too. And all of you. I'm just trying to teach you something. Amen. Or renew your remembrance to something. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. But it's our flesh. So here, I got five minutes, okay? Four minutes, maybe. Okay, this is the remedy. The remedy. And this is supposed to be next week, but I've waited off into the other last week so much, or two weeks ago so much already, that I kind of double covered uh, a lot of it. The remedy, the way to fix it, if you have trouble. I mean, James didn't give us this to push us down. He gave us this so that we could understand and be victorious. And that's why I'm teaching it. In fact, the Lord, I'm teaching it because the Lord told me to teach it. <laughs> Two weeks ago. And I've been breaking it down in segments. But submit yourselves to God. That's the first thing. If you don't do that, the devil's going to stomp all over you. He's he going to whoop you. I'm just telling you, I'm giving you some good advice from the scripture. James 4, 7. Submit yourself to God and then you'll never defeat the devil unless you take this first step. Amen. He will rule and reign in your life until you do this. And I can't do it for you. I wish I could. No, no. I have to do it in my own life. No. This is something I've got to do. If I don't do this, you know, the devil is a fallen angel. You are a human being. It's not until you link up with Jesus that you become more powerful and have more authority than the devil. So if you don't submit yourself to God, he's going, the devil's going to have rule over you. It's when you submit yourself to God, then you can resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's, come on. These people are having trouble with the devil. Where it's coming for wars and fighting among you. And I, my, my whole topic here, are you having trouble with the devil? <laughs> okay? Submit yourself to God. 
Then, at that point, you can resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He will actually run away from you. And, I, and strong as he just says, he will avoid being around you. Already covered that. Next, he says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Amen. You've got to cleanse your hands, you sinners. Because they're, they're fighting and hurting one another, aren't they? Yeah, man. We're the fighters, you, right? He said, draw nigh to God. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Quit being double-minded. Be spiritual and refuse to be a carnal person. Make up your mind, I'm going to live for God. I'm going to be led of God's Spirit. I am not going to be a fleshly, carnal person. I'm going to walk after the Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> okay? He says, uh, <clears throat> purify your heart, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn. This is talking about spend some time repenting. That's what this is talking about. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning. He's not telling you to live constantly like this. But if you're, if you're facing times where you've got all kinds of chaos going on in your life or in your family or, or whatever, go to God in prayer. Ask for forgiveness and ask God to forgive you for being carnal. Or if, if, you, if it's not you, pray for the ones that are in your house. Ask God to forgive them. Remember what Jesus did say, pray for your enemies, right? Amen. Bless those that curse you, bless and curse not. Because that's a spiritual path. Not, not retaliate, not God kill them, I'm going to fast it. God will take them off the planet of earth. <laughs> that's flesh. That's flesh. That's not God. God doesn't hear that. Right? Be afflicted and mourn. And we let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heavens. Humble yourselves. It's going to take some humbling. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. I already read that. Okay, praise God. <clears throat> praise God. And Peter says this, and I'll close with this until my time is up. 1 Peter 5 5. Likewise, you younger, Submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you, all of you, all of you, have, we need to have a certain mindset. All of you be subject one to another. We don't have an attitude of, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> right? Who are you to be teaching me? We ought to all be able to learn from people. Yeah. And I'm not talking about learn wrong things. I'm talking about take advice. That's good advice. Be subject to one another and be clothed. Be clothed. Put on a garment, right? Be clothed with what? Humility. What is that? Be clothed. In other words, when I see you or you see me, you should be seeing humility. You know what that is? That's humbleness of your mind, the way you think. You don't think arrogantly and think that you're above others and none of that stuff. That's not God. For God resists the proud, and that's what's happening when people are not filled with humility. God resists the proud. He actually pushes it away. He doesn't want nothing to do with pridefulness. He, it's a stink to him. He, it's a it's a abhorrent smell to him. Amen. He does not like it. Be clothed with him, yet God resists the proud, but he's going to give grace. How many of you don't want the grace of God? I want the grace of God. He gives grace to the humble. Amen. Right? Oh, somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. <clears throat> on this, and I meant to do it in three sections, and we're going to spend some time on it, but I found out I overlapped the first one a little bit with some other two weeks ago, so if I said the same thing twice, then well, bear with me, <laughs> be full of the Spirit, <laughs> bear with me, put up with me, tolerate me, 
Amen. Praise God. Amen. My wife's done it for 41 years. Praise God. She's a pretty patient lady. Amen. Her husband is too. Sure is. <laughs> uh, she's probably listening. I don't mind her hearing that. I cut up with her a lot. Hey, let's stand. Santos, I'm so glad to see you tonight. Thanks, thanks. Sister Wendy. All of you. I'm glad you're here tonight. Praise God. Let's say a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for allowing us to spend some time in your word. I pray something has been said to help us live for you and walk with you. Love one another, be good to one another, kind to one another, and help us, Jesus, to be faithful and true witnesses of yours. My Lord, I believe your coming is so very near, and I want to be ready, and I want your people to be ready. Jesus, help us to live pleasing before your sight, and not grieve your Holy Spirit of promise. Lord, we love you, and we're grateful for the time you've allowed us to have tonight ask you to bless your people now be with them and bless their families, their homes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody say in Jesus' name.